Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the next episode of The Seduction Show. It's been a while. It's been too long. But we have a very good reason today to uh, start it again. If you remember it well, where we left it off was me doing interviews with uh, men and women that uh, inspire me, fascinate me, and whose voice I sense must be spread into the world. And uh, today, uh, we have the opportunity and the privilege to sit at the feet and ask questions of uh, Federico Martinetti. And Federico, as you hear it, was a Italian heritage living in London. We met, we're actually connected through the work I do, um, but we met in Belgium a couple of weeks ago. And um, he's a very fascinating man to me. Um, for lack of a better word, Federico is, is a courtier for the past couple of decades. Uh, yeah, at the service mainly of women. You can correct me later if I'm wrong, uh, Federico. But at the service of women. And that goes from being a massage therapist of uh, giving yoni massage to the services that are provided by what we would call gigolo. And uh, yes, what struck me in when he was telling his story is his real desire, uh, calling to be at the service of women. Um, we also spoke about, and we'll talk about this a little later, how after all these years, uh, he feels a little depleted and he's uh, seeking to bring his genius to the world in a different way. I say his genius. And, uh, and th this is the conversation that Federico and I have been having. Um, I stand for this man because I see how much he wants to be in service of the other. That's both uh, women and men. And that I may be of service in, uh, yeah, his reinvention and bringing his voice to the world. So this podcast is uh, one small step in that. I want you... Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to uh, get to know Federico and uh, I'll ask a couple of questions of him today. If you throughout the conversation have questions, you can write them underneath, you can send them to me. And then uh, if we have enough interesting, fascinating questions, we'll do a follow-up uh, dealing with them. Um, how was that as an introduction to you, Federico? <laughs> it's a good introduction, <laughs> yeah. You made me say I'm better than, uh, than I really am, but yeah, that's good. Um, we, we, we'll talk about the specifics, but um, I also want to say this, who, who Federico is to me, um, who Federico is to me is a, a great man, a great man with incredible dignity. And with dignity, I mean uh, both integrity and beauty. And uh, yes, in, in, in the Italian use the word, I think, sprezzatura, which is mm. like a style and a grace to make something that's difficult look easy. And, uh, and Federico has sprezzatura in spades and I'm uh, inspired by it. Um, I'm inspired by his decision in his life to be at service of, uh, yeah, and I'm very, I'm, I think I'm mostly even inspired by the call that he's answering to become an elder for other men and, um, yeah, share with them what he has learned about women through the particular job that he's been doing. So uh, yeah, that's who Federico is uh, to me. Who I am to him is uh, an ally. I wanna stand next to him. Um, I want to make him feel cared for. 
because he's a real leader and uh, it could be very lonely in that place. And yeah, I just, uh, I'm the one who will, uh, who speaks well of him and will help him articulate his message and his great genius and gift uh, into the world. So that's who I am for him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad I got you, Hans. I'm glad I got someone like you behind me. <laughs> nice. Sounds good. Yes. So today we'll do a very short conversation. This is just an introduction of, of you, your energy, your work, uh, your gift into the world. And uh, yes, if there are questions, we'll follow up with it. So let me ask you this. I said a little bit about what you do. How would you articulate or say what you currently are doing? Uh, you see, the first thing that people think when it comes to what I'm doing is, uh, is, is to do with the adult industry, to do with sex, sexuality. And I just, for me, I don't see it that way at all. It's, the, the sex part is not, it's not the biggest part for me, although that's that's where that's 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 I'm the person that women will turn to uh, based on their sexuality and then wanting to express it more. But for me, it's not. It's the sexuality part is just a, it's a vehicle. It's a vehicle that I use to get them to to see themselves for what they really are which is amazing beautiful human beings mm. i want i want them to see themselves the way i see them which is like that. that that's how i see them and i use i suppose i use i use my sexuality and theirs to to bring that out of them to mm. help them come to the conclusion that mm. they are this amazing person with so much inside them so much to give the world and yet they hold themselves back so much uh they're constrained by people's other people's opinions of them mm. how they're seen by the world how they're seen by their peers their fellow women how they're seen by their men, uh, and it holds them back. It holds them back a lot, and this causes this causes problems in all, well in other aspects of their lives. So it, it, it affects all their lives basically. So by the time they've come to me, I know I, I more or less have a I have a good idea whether I've met them before or not on where they are mm. uh, on that road in that path to rediscovering themselves mm. and my job as far as i can see it is to help them to, to bring that out of them mm. to to drop all the not to drop the mask basically and free themselves uh, free their free all their their emotions their feelings their, their sexuality mm. I just want to see that come out of them. And by the end of it, I want them to see themselves the way I see them, the way they should be seen by the world. Yes. It's just, it's, for me, it's a tragedy. It really is that these beautiful people are just hidden within themselves. They hide themselves all the time. Uh, they have this mask on all the time. And, and what's really, what I find fascinating as well is that they, we all wear a mask, all of us do, no matter who we are. But we all pretend that we don't. We all pretend we're not wearing a mask. And that's just, it's just crazy to me. It's, it's crazy to live one's whole life like that, in this pretend world that we create for ourselves. And, and we just, we just drive along every day with our blinkers on, and try and get through the day, 
just try and get through our lives until we reach a point where we can't take it anymore. And that's when, usually that's when they, they look for somebody like me. Mm. That's where I come along. And it's, it's, for me, it's, a, it's an absolute privilege. But nobody, I can't, I don't, I don't, I don't talk about my work to anybody. I really don't. Uh, it's too difficult to, for me to explain it, to get people to understand it. Mm. As far as people are concerned when it comes to me, they just see me as, men see me as having a, a fantastic life, a fantastic career. They think I, I sleep with a different woman every night. I, 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 I have a great life. You know, that's all they can see. Mm. Women see me kind of the same way but they think that they think that um that i'm that i'm loved that everybody loves me because i can i can bring them to to a different place i can i can create a different space in them mm. where they can express themselves and so they just automatically think that everybody appreciates that about me and loves me for it and, and shows me it. But they don't. Mm. They really don't. They, they just assume everybody else does, so they don't do it themselves. Um, which leaves me, which leaves me on my own. It leaves me alone. I mean, because I don't, because of the, the work that I do, you know, on the surface, it is a great life. It really is. But it's a lonely life, and it means I don't have I don't have personal relationships in, in the sense that I don't have romantic so, personal relationships. So why why do you do it, or why did you start doing it? Because I hear you both say it's a privilege. Mm, it is. And at the other hand, on the other hand, you say also they don't see how lonely it is. Mm. Well, you see, at first it's, at first you think you can deal with it. At first you think, this is fine. I don't mind, as long as, it, as long as I can get something from it in the sense that I know that I've helped somebody. I've, 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 mm. I've given them almost a new lease of life. I've, I've made them see the world differently. I've made them look at themselves differently. And the feeling that I get from that is incredible. It's, 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 it's the best feeling in the world. It makes me feel like, you know, I, I win the lottery every day. It, it's just beautiful. Mm. You know? But then I'm, I'm, I'm on my own. But then I'm on my own. I, 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 I have to get through the rest of my life on my own until the next encounter. And then wow. the encounter, I get it again. And so you start to get addicted to that. You get addicted to that feeling, to, to be in the service, to, to, to helping them, get, get in your, your, your part, your, 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 your payment really is, is, that, is, is the feeling that you get from giving them yourself. Yes. You know, but it does leave you depleted. It does leave you empty. Uh -huh. after, um, after years of doing that. This is know. what you notice after years now that... Uh, yeah, you know, after... After years, it's just, just a little bit less in the tank, a little bit less, a little bit less, until one day you realize, you know, I think, I think my tank's going to be empty soon, and then, and then, and then what? Then where am I? What do I do now? Uh, what am I left with? Am I just going to be a shell? You know, my, my personal relationships, my romantic relationships have been totally ruined. I can't, it's very difficult for me to have a, a relationship with a, with, with a woman and, and and not treat her like a client, actually. You know, it, it's very difficult. Yeah. I, you know, my mind keeps, it keeps going back to that, so I keep feeding them all the time. I never really take from them. So they, they get used to that too. They get used to taking from me and, and not giving back. You know, to them it's, well, he doesn't need it. You know, he's happy as he is, he doesn't need it. And, I don't know. It's it's it's, it's just it's 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 a difficult it's a difficult way to get through life. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. I see the, the, the crossroads in the way that you're at, and I want to come back to it maybe a bit later. Let me, let me take one step back and, and see at the present, like what is it, what is this exactly that you do with, say, women uh, when you offer your services? How, how do you meet? What, what do you do? And yeah. What's the, what's the pros the process? The process is, uh, it's, it's very slow. It's a very slow process. Once I get started, it's very slow. How how do how do people meet you? How do women meet you? Uh, well, I'm, I'm, it's a lot of it is well, some of it is word of mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been interviewed a few times. I've been in a couple of big magazines. Um, so they've read about me. Mm. I'm affiliated to a company called Massage Her in London. So they hear me, they hear of me through them, mm. uh, and they'll recommend me to certain clients. Uh -huh. So that's that's really how I how I operate. I'm not. I'm a very private person. Yeah. I don't advertise myself. I don't have. I'm not a social media freak. Uh, I don't have personal accounts on social media. So it's all done that way. It's all done through really the website and word of mouth. Okay. And then they contact you by email, by phone, and, and they come for what? They come initially. They come for a yoni massage. So there's, there's, there's quite a few women that have had problems or have problems when it comes to uh, having an orgasm. So the yoni massage allows them to, at the very least, learn a little bit about their bodies and learn how to, how to let go, mm. how to get to the point of having an orgasm. Most of the time, I mean, some, some women would just think there's something physically wrong with them, that they just can't, they can't orgasm. They, they can't orgasm by themselves. It's not a matter of them being relaxed and not being relaxed. It's, they just never get to the point mm. where they have that explosion. Uh, and so I suppose they want to find out from me, is it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it psychosomatic? Is it in their minds? Or is there actually something wrong with it physically? Mm -hmm. uh, I've never come across anybody that has actually something wrong with them. <laughs> every, every single client I've had has, has had an orgasm with me. Mm. Uh, and is, is, the, is the massage, is, am I, I'm imagining a traditional massage laying down or is it, is it, is it broader? Is, there a, is it more than that? No, it's much more than that. It's much more than that. It's, well, the way, the way I work it is I always have, I have a very brief conversation with the person to begin with and I tell them more or less what to expect but I need to tell them what to expect in the sense of their, how they're going to feel when it comes to their how they how I'm going to get them to relax so I, I tell them this is really it's not about having an orgasm this is about you just relaxing just letting go just being present in the moment not thinking about yesterday, tomorrow, just being present in the moment, getting the most out of every sensation that you feel. And I tell them, you're going to have many different types of sensations. You're, you're going to experience different smells. You're going to experience different sounds. You're going to experience different forms of, of, of touch. You're going to experience all of these things. They're all going to come together and they're going to form your your world for this next hour or so. Mm. Okay. And I mean, I can go through exactly what I do step by step. That's, that's, that's it's irrelevant to this conversation really. Mm. But, uh, but the main thing that I do is I first of all tell them not to expect anything when it comes to orgasms or mm -hmm. having an orgasm, not having an orgasm. I don't want them to think they're there for an orgasm because they're not. For me, they're not there for an orgasm. Okay. 
Okay. They're there for me to bring them into a space where they can see themselves. Mm. They can let go of all the, all, all, all the pre-programming that they've had from their mothers and fathers and friends and teachers and guardians. I want them to let go of all those things all, and, and, and all the preconceptions they, they have about mm. what I'm about to do to them too. So right. I want to just completely clear their minds. Mm. And so the first thing I do is I, well, first of all, I'll put a blindfold on them. So they can't see anything. Don't forget these women, they've never met me before. But I'm about to strip, to strip them stark naked in front of a complete stranger. Now, every woman, every woman I know I've ever met has body issues. So asking her to strip naked in front of a guy that never met before is a massive ask. Mm. So the first thing I do is I put a, a blindfold on. So because psychologically, we all think, you know, like children, if, if, if you're hiding behind a sofa and you're playing hide and seek with a child, if, if you know, if he shuts his eyes and he doesn't see you, he, he kind of thinks you can't see him too. So mm. we still have that within us. So when I put a blindfold on her, she, in a sense, thinks that I can't see her because she can't see me. Mm. So the whole world has gone black to her, you know. And I start to undress them, and I, and I undress them from behind. So I'm standing behind them, very close, and very close to them. So while I'm taking their clothes off, I can't actually see them anywhere. Mm. And they know that because they can feel me breathing on the back of their necks. Mm. And so this is a process that I, I take my time with this. I, I, I undress them very, very slowly. And this is a massive turn. Women are never undressed by their men, never. If they ever are, it's quick, it's ripping clothes off. But it's never done slowly and sensually and mm. carefully and thoughtfully. It's never done to them that way. This is a first experience for them. So straight away, I have them in another place. Mm. Straight away, they're thinking, I've, nobody's ever done this to me before. This has never happened to me before. Mm. And so now I have them totally naked, but with a blindfold on. So in their minds, they're not self-conscious anymore. Mm. They're not thinking they've got a big bum or whatever, and there's cellulite and all these things they usually don't want in their heads. They're not thinking those things anymore. And then I lie them down and then I start. And then I start with a certain type of essential oil. I have them smell things. I, mm -hmm. I, I have a certain ritual which I do to them as well. I bring their breathing rate down and I slow their heart rate down. And all the way through, I'm monitoring them. I'm reading them. I'm taking note of their breathing rate. I'm taking note of their heart rate. I need to know this. I need to know exactly where they are in their minds. It's, it, you're almost like a priest. This is like a ceremony, it sounds to me. Well, it is. It is. And you have to do it that way. You have to treat it that way. Because this is, this is important to them. This, this means a lot to them. This is no... It's sometimes... They'll contact me over the space of a year before they actually book with me. You know, they're so unsure about it. They're so scared to let go. And then once they've been with me and they've done it, they, they just keep booking. They just keep coming back. Uh -huh. really? what, that's, what do you see yourself what's what, I say priest but maybe that's I don't want to put words in your mouth you know but what, how do you see yourself what is your role per your own account in that encounter how do you how do you want to show up or how do you tell yourself to show up or how do you show up I suppose I suppose in my mind, I am, I am the man, I, I represent, I represent the masculine energy. I give them, I give them what I feel inside for the female spirit. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I'm representing every man that's ever disappointed them before. I'm not that man. Mm. I'm representing the opposite. I am here totally for you. There is nobody else in my world right now 
but you. Nobody else exists. You are my main priority. You are the only thing I care about. Mm. And they feel that from me because it's true. I, I feel it. This is not an act. Mm. I don't do this for effect. I don't do this so they can they come back to me. Mm. In some cases, I don't want them to come back to me. Mm. I want them to go off into the world and create their own life, create their yeah. own space. You know. So for me, I represent them a man that is truly there for them. Truly there. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to get into their knickers. I'm not trying them trying to get them to do something for me. I don't want them to do anything for me. Mm. I'm here to do for them. A lot of women have never experienced that. Mm. A man is always, he always has his own agenda. He's mm. trying to get into their pants. He's trying to do some, there's something that he wants from them. Mm. And then he takes it. And he believes, most men believe that if they feel a certain way, if they have a certain amount of, of arousal or whatever, that their partner feels the same way. But they don't. Women have their own way of expressing sexuality. And it's not like the male way of expressing sexuality. Mm. Men forget that. But there's, there's, a, there's a difference. There's a polarity between a man and a woman when it comes to sex. Women do not look at sex in the same way as men do. They don't feel it in the same way men do. They're a different species when it comes to that. Uh, men don't realize this. A lot of men, in fact, don't, don't realize this. So, if, if sexuality between men and women is so different, if we are a different species in that regard, mm -hmm. like, assume we agree on it, how would you articulate that difference? And I know maybe this may be hard to, to do, but mm. what would be the best way to articulate the difference in sexuality between men and women? The simplest way I think I could articulate that is, and this is, I, th I think men, men work, men work from the center. Men work from the center outwards. So their focus is always on the target. It's always the center, you know. Women, women operate the opposite way. They, op they, they operate from the outside to the center. Mm. It's, it's, a completely, it's a completely different way of reaching the same, the same goals, the same feelings, the same sensations, the same emotions. But women do it from here and they go in. Mm. The men go from here outwards. So a man, when a man gets aroused, is the first thing that, that the, the first emotion or feeling that comes into his mind is to put his penis inside the woman. That's the, that's the name of the game for him. That's what we're here for. Mm. You know, I want to penetrate. A woman doesn't think like that, like that. She doesn't think, I'm really turned on. I just want him to penetrate me. She doesn't. She wants him to work on her. She wants him to come in slowly, to build her arousal up until she's begging him to penetrate her. These are two different ways of, getting, of achieving the same thing. Mm. Men think that, well, because I'm so aroused and I really want to fuck her, obviously she's thinking the same. She wants me to really fuck her, and she may do, but... If he doesn't, if he takes it from the outside and works it in, she will get so much more out of it and so will he. It will be a totally different experience for both of them. Mm. But and it's a simple thing. It's just such a simple little thing. <laughs> very few people do it. And very few people know about it. I don't know why, but it's true. You know? So and you touched upon it a little bit. If, if the difference is, if, and I'm, going short through the turn, the men go from the center outward, maybe. Women go from the outside yes. towards the center. What would be, as simple as it may be, what would be your advice to men? <laughs> like, where does, 
where do where do we start honoring this difference in sexuality what can we do what would you tell a guy practically that's such a difficult difficult question to answer here now like this yeah. it's, it's, it's 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 long it's convoluted it's it's really i suppose i suppose i would say stop and observe be an observer mm. come out of yourself don't be so don't be such a a male don't be such a man don't don't be so egotistical stop think look at yourself and then look at her read her see where she's going you know she's easy women send signals all the time women are always constantly bombarding us with signals we just don't see them mm. you know? stop and look listen to her breathing rate see where it is you know find out hardly see where that's going yes look at her look at her look into her eyes she'll tell you everything she'll tell you everything you want to know she'll yeah. tell you what she wants you to do the thing women always say to me is that you know what i want you to do without me saying it and i'm like yeah but you do say it yes you did say it. you just didn't use your mouth to do it you didn't vocalize it exactly. you told me exactly where you wanted me to go and that's where i went i heard you it's great i have this concept of the se the secret uh the secret realm of seduction and it's it's about this about the signals women sending out to men all mm. the time in say social situations whether they like someone or oh, yeah. oh, yeah. what to do and so you're describing the same thing in in the bedroom in the erotic realm in the sexuality realm so it's very interesting which is more important to me Mm. I'm, I'm I'm more interested in what they're telling me in the bedroom than in a social setting. To be honest with you, right, right, right. that doesn't interest me as much. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Federico, that's amazing. And I, I mean, um, there must be, as I'm listening, there must be so much that you learned about women that. Well, there's one thing that, that really touched me when you were describing is you said uh, some women, they want to come back and I would rather not, mm. uh, I'd rather not be the one that's needed to make them, I'm, I'm paraphrasing now, to make them feel a certain way. Um, yeah. Are you, okay. what what is it is is there a part of you that would like for the women to have this experience from say their men oh yeah yeah that's 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 why i i, I don't want i don't always want them coming back to me because then they they rely on me i i'm the only one in their minds i'm the only one that can bring them there. I'm the only one that can make them feel that way. Mm. And I don't want to be the only one. Mm. You know, I would rather, because in some cases, women come and see me without, they're married, but the, their husbands don't know. They don't know they're seeing me. Sometimes they do. Sometimes their husbands are totally aware of what's going on. But sometimes they're not. And they do it behind their backs. And I would rather their husband take them because they love him. You know, this is their loved one. This is the person they married. Mm. Uh, they have a life and history with. They don't have that with me. You know, imagine how beautiful it would be for them to have this with him. Because I'm sure deep in their hearts, that's, that's what they would believe, not me. Mm. They want him. So, which, is, which brings me to what I've started doing now which is doing a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with men mm. and teaching them how to bring their women into this place. Mm. You know, opening the door for them, just, just allowing them to, yes. to, to be the hero, 
Mm. I don't want to be the hero. I can't be everybody's hero. And if I can, if I can spread that, if I can, if I can teach other men to do this, it's it's like it can it it, it, it will spread. The ripple effect will go will, will carry on. It's like it's like looking at a looking at a an apple seed and thinking to yourself, well, how many how many apple trees are in this apple seed? Mm -hmm. You know. The answer is an infinite amount of apple trees. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing, like, I, as you were telling the story, I was thinking of, you know, how incredible would it be that you could bring what you know and learned to men? And then I instantly see also the obstacles that could be on the way. Like, if men are reserved about, say, in my line of work, accepting advice or mentorship or help mm -hmm. of another man in terms of say how to talk to a woman yeah that's even more delicate when it comes to sexuality because you know? there's a part of you know men are very we talked in i talked in the facebook live this morning about this yeah. men are very much like i know what to do it i don't need directions you know so mm. this is is amplified i would imagine in the bedroom so oh yeah well you see i, I work with couples as well uh-huh okay so i see that firsthand so mm -hmm. i see them, i'm there when the when the husband is making love to his wife i'm there i'm watching mm. uh um, and so I, I i i see where i see where where the men think they're taking their wives mm. and i can see this it, thing <laughs> it's in their heads it's not really wow. out wow. the wives are not going there at all the guy has convinced himself mm. that he's a fantastic lover and his wife is just like you know she loves everything he does and it's not true a lot of time it's just not true so mm. how do you wow that's 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 tragic, you know. It really is. It is. And, and and also like something you must be facing if you do want to allow a man to be the hero. Like, how would you do that without bringing shame to him? How will you do that without, you know, just startling the ego? Because for me, it's not about. Well, certainly not bringing shame to him. That would be counterproductive. Mm -hmm. uh, so it would be done very carefully. It's, 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 it's done very carefully. You have to choose your words very carefully. Mm -hmm. But when, it, when, when a man sees the difference in, for instance, if I'm with a couple and I'm making love to this man's wife and he sees her, he sees how she is with me, and I might make her have an, let's say, an orgasm. Uh, let's say, for instance, she doesn't she doesn't usually orgasm internally; she only orgasms externally. And he, all of a sudden, he sees her for the first. They've been together, you know, 15, 20 years, and for the first time ever, he sees her have an orgasm internally. He's never seen this. She doesn't do that. She only ever has an orgasm externally. With the clitoris, and now he's seen that now, and he's asking me, "Wait a minute, how did this happen?" Mm. And now he's interested. Now he's, oh, I, "I must be doing something wrong." If she's not having, if she's not having an internal mm. orgasm with me, but she is with this this guy, then there's something I'm doing something wrong. She's having a great time, but she's not having an orgasm. Mm. That's, this is just one very simple example. Yeah. So that will, that will pick up his interest and that will make him want to ask more questions. Mm. And, and then we all get down to the nitty gritty, which isn't about what I'm doing. It's not about what I'm doing. It's not my technique. Right. It's not, I don't have special techniques that I've developed over the years. The only thing that I'm doing is I've got inside the brain, I've got inside her head. I've allowed her to completely let go. Mm. 
And then he wants to learn how to do that. It's not about technique. Right. It's about where she is mentally, in, in her mind, psychologically. Where is she? Which place is she in? Where have you taken her? If you, if, if, if you don't take her anywhere, she's just going to be the same every time. Every time you make love, it's the same thing. She's going she's to orgasm in the same way. She's going to make the same noises. She's going to make... Everything will be exactly the same. It might, the setting might be different, but everything else will be the same. Mm. So it's a case of, of getting inside her head, making her think differently, making her feel differently. Mm. It, it, it encompasses everything. Imagination. Yes. How, like going forward, because I'm, I'm thinking of like how to bring this and I see it in a, in a huge challenge. How do you see that you could is what you just described like through couples and and having him see what's possible is that the way you 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 see you could be of service to men and and bringing them what you know or is there other ways that you 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 see yourself bringing that knowledge to men and and help them forward i could i i could I could put all this in a book mm. and set a book. It wouldn't do any good. It wouldn't make that much difference. It might convert a handful of people, but the majority will still be lost. Mm. It needs to be demonstrated. They need, they need that confidence as well of mm. seeing it. And so if, if, I, if I did it to their wives, they would see that. It's possible they would see that mm. you know, we can go to different places. If I do it with, because what I do is I, I use a model as well. Mm, okay. So I'll, 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 I'll have somebody that's there purely for, for demonstrational purposes. Mm. And if he sees her, it, it really doesn't matter if it's his wife or anybody else. Mm. Uh, if he sees her react a certain way, uh, for a certain amount of time because of a certain thing that I did or made her feel, that'll give him confidence that, well, it's possible, it can be done. And if, 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 if this guy, if I can teach him, then all I did was a, a, a few little things and nothing, this is not rocket science, you know, but the most important thing was that I, I, I listened to her, I saw and heard her. I dropped myself down to nothing. I, I left my ego totally at the door and just concentrated on what she wanted. Mm. You know, and if I can, if I can, you know, if I can transfer that to another man, which, which I can, as long as they can see that it's possible. Reading it from a book and giving them a step one, do this, and step two, do that, it's not going to help anybody to do anything. You cannot read, you can't learn this from a book. You have to do it, you have to see it. And they have to get it wrong as well. They have to see when it doesn't work. That's just as important as when it does. Mm. Yeah. Wow. And once they have it, they have it. It won't leave you, you know? Do you, is this, is this the way forward for you in terms of like how you bring what you, like this kind of offering, this kind of like helping men? I think it's a possibility of being the way forward. It's not, it's not totally the way forward, no. Mm. I mean, I, it's because I'm only one man. I can only do one thing at a time. Mm. I can only see one man at a time. I can only see one company at a time. I think if I could, if I could somehow package it in a, in a course, in an online course, or, Something, something where, where, where I can, I can spread the message a lot further. Mm. But it has to work. Yeah, you know, has to do. Putting this in, a, in an online course is, a, is it's, it's an obstacle for me. It's a way I need to find, yeah, how to do that. What I see is, is like, and this is time more putting a, a bow around it in a way, or coming back to the beginning. You said when you've been for so long just at service 
And mm. although you get a kind of dopamine hit of feeling the satisfaction of, of, of helping a woman go from A to B, in the long run, it feels you've been, it's depleting to you. Um, do you see how, is for you the work of, 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 of say, helping men out, is that a way for you to look to do something that's more fulfilling for you as well? Yes, it is. Um, if I could, if I could help men, uh, well, first of all, I'm not giving myself to men. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm only guiding. Mm. I'm leading. Mm. I'm demonstrating. I'm, I'm showing. That's, that's all I'm doing. So it's not going to take, it's not going to take the same out, out of me. You know, I, I, I still retain what I have inside me. I can still save that for a partner of mine. Mm. Somebody that, that I want to be with, somebody that I love, and somebody that's got my back as well. Mm. You know, so, which I don't have. I don't have that. Mm. I'm hoping to change it, but right now it's not going to. I see, I see. So the work is fulfilling for you because you're also not given completely and and you can hold yourself and look at it. it's not depleting i get it i get it yeah. wow well i i could tell you this federico is that i know i sense that you have a great gift for men and women their women and uh that this message, that this knowledge, that this sensibility, that this way of seeing things is, of, is, is, is of incredible value for humanity, for people, for couples. And uh, yeah, that it's, it is a very, I want to assist you in it, in like finding a way to bring this to the world, you know, what you know. And uh and that's satisfying for you. That's fulfilling for you. Because I see how, you know, how, how tough it is to uh, be in service the way you've been in service. So, yeah, I just also want to thank you for, you know, being so open about it, you know, and, uh, okay. and sharing with us. I know you're a very uh, reserved, secretive person. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and you know, it, there's, there's risk connected with bringing things out like this. Um, but if we are to reinvent relationships and find better ways of men and, and women to understand each other and create win-wins with each other, then this is such an essential component of all that, you know, the sexuality and your experience with it and your understanding of it i think is 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 invaluable so i'm i feel very privileged that you bring a little bit of this to us uh today and um yeah if anyone is interested you know if you have questions you can ask me you won't find federico it is very hard or you could put questions underneath here and uh and i would love to do a follow-up and and start with uh, the questions that people may have um yeah if you're a woman a woman listening to this also you know and uh, you're interested you can always ask me and uh, i'll uh, i'll function as the manager of uh federico um or is there another way they can contact you federico no i'm, I'm very difficult to find <laughs> you know I, as as you know i mean it's it's been a real privilege actually speaking to you. And as, as you know, I didn't really, I wasn't very keen on doing this. Mm. Kind of had to talk me into this a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad, I'm glad I did. I'm glad you gave me this opportunity to, to let it out, because I don't speak about it ever to, to anybody. Yes. And so it's been, uh, it's been quite uplifting, actually, to get some mm. things off my chest. Yes. Yeah, and so yeah. thank you very much. Thank you for this. Yes. I'm here to take care of you, brother. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you so much.
I will uh, hopefully speak to you soon. We'll get together. Yes, we and, will. Uh, we will. Looking we'll forward to the new chapter, man. Talk yeah, soon. Definitely. You take care of yourself. Bye-bye, Federico. Yeah, yeah, brother. Bye-bye. Thank you.